everyone, it's Nadia from Leah Dia Designs and I'm back with another tutorial. Today we have a really fun one. It comes with a little bit of a story, but it's really exciting actually. So um, so I got this mold in from Shop Resin Molds and it's actually a purse. So I have this round one and I have a rectangular one as well. I'm sure in another video I'll do the rectangular one for you guys, but today we're working with the round one. So now it comes with one mold and it comes with um, the hardware. So this is the hardware for the purse. I believe it comes with a chain. I might have the chain somewhere, but if not, don't worry about it. I'm, I'm like I said, there's a story. So, <laughs> so anyway, um, I got this mold and uh, I did pour one side. This is the, actually the second side. I'll show you guys the first side a bit later, but um, I did pour the first side and when I took it out of the mold, which is what I'm going to do now, actually it's, you're going to see it right away. This one spot, I'm going to show you, like it doesn't, ha it wasn't happening anywhere else on the mold. This one spot had what looked like, well, it, what it is, is basically there's a roughness in the mold. Uh, and I checked and it's actually in the mold. I don't know if you guys can see it, but the, the, the mold itself has that issue. So I did contact uh, Shop Resin Molds about it and they are looking into it. They've contacted the manufacturer and they're going to sort it out. But so I had, had contacted them and I said I was so disappointed because I really wanted to make this video um, with this mold just to kind of show it off and to see what I had and, you know, to see what you know, I can make with it because I had something kind of cool in mind and I kind of left it and they said, okay, well, they're going to get back to me. They'll have to contact the manufacturer and uh, let me know. And, uh, you know, hopefully they'll resend out a new one or whatever. Um, once they kind of know what the situation is, but so I was kind of disheartened by that because I really want to get this video done, but, um, I was thinking about it and I decided that, you know, Sometimes we get molds that may have imperfections in them and we don't know what to do. And obviously if it's on a main surface, it's a major problem. So we have to work with it. We have to like get a new one or something. But in this case, it's on the side. So I was thinking maybe I can do something about that. So I decided to grab my trusty washi tape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be using this washi tape to cover the side. So and it actually looks really cool, like so on the piece so we're going to be doing that so i'm going to do that but and then on the on the front here we're doing a different type of technique or design so let's get the washi tape on first and then we'll be back okay so i have my washi tape and i'm going to be using my exacto knife here because i when i did this before the washi tape was a little bit long so you can see i'm going to try to put it right to the edge here and then you'll see on the inside we have a little bit of a an edge so I'll go ahead and put this on and it's really nothing more than just taking it like this I'm gonna go around the damaged part so this way I'll start about here okay so there we go and I'm just gonna take my exacto and we're gonna overlap it a little bit and then just kind of trim it like that. So I'll put this away. And then it's important to go ahead and rub down and kind of any little creases that might have happened along the way, just kind of flatten them out. All right, so then once we're ready, what we'll do is we're gonna take our, I mean, you can use scissors if you want, but I feel like the exacto blade, whoop, is going to be a little bit more accurate and we can just kind of run it along here a utility knife would work as well if that's all if that's what you have uh, as you guys know I'm more comfortable with the exacto blades so Oop. like a so there we go. Now I didn't do that one perfectly down there, but let's just fix up. Now the good thing about this piece is the bottom edge here is going inside the hardware. So this bottom edge, even if it's not perfect, it's you know not going to show. Obviously, we want it to be as clean as possible, but when it goes into 
the hardware it actually goes in you can see so a good amount of it about released about a probably about a quarter inch or so of it goes inside the hardware so so don't worry too too much about that but anyway so that is the washi tape edge so look how quick and easy that was so I mean honestly you could you know just do something like that if you wanted like a simple side like a simple just flat color on the side you could just decorate up the edge like this and and it would look really pretty so we have that so now for the front what I want to do is I want to look at the products that we were looking at last week with the uh, the foil so we had our kind of our glue material here and then we were using this foil so I'm going to do the same thing I want to use these same two products today so but what I'm going to do differently is I'm not going to be piping this I'm going to be using a stencil so I'm going to grab that over right back okay so I'm back so I have this stencil here and again if you've been following me for at least a year <laughs> you'll recognize some of these stencils um, I had bought a pack and I had made a clock with one of them. I don't think it was this one. It was a different one, but uh, this one may have popped up in a video. I can't really remember. But anyways, this is the one I want to use. Now, it is bigger than the purse that we're going to be making, but that's okay. So what we want to do is we're going to center it as best we can. And the way I'm going to center it is I'm looking at the outside design. I'm not sure if you guys can see it, but it's peeking. The edges are peeking through. And I'm just kind of doing my best to kind of get it mostly centered within that area. And then what I'm going to be doing is taking this product, the glue product. Um, I had used this one before. So um, this is the exact same thing, just the smaller one. I had hit this one was already open, so I used it for that. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to open it so that I can actually put some right. Oh, and it's coming right out. I put some on like a tissue or something here. I'm going to need more than that, but just to kind of show. Oop, everything's going everywhere. Okay, so I'm going to center this. Now, if you have a sponge that you use for your art um, that you want to, you know, can use and rewash, because you can wash this stuff out. I'm just using a paper towel today because I have some sponges, but I don't really want to use them for this purpose. And uh, or if you have like, you know, um, I was actually thinking about those beauty blenders that come out a couple years ago that were like acrylic, like they were like a rubbery material, not the foam ones, but like the rubbery acrylic clear ones. Those would even be pretty cool for something like this because it'd be easily washable. But in any case, we're going to take this as any type of material that we want and we're going to just Kind of use a stencil in kind of a stipply type. Of, I mean, you could tape down your stencil if you want, but I'm living on the edge today. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. I'm kind of in a hurry, actually. So I want to get this ready for you guys. So let's just do this. And it is glue, so to keep that in mind, uh, it will it will wash off your stencil as, as long as you wash it as soon as you're done here so and you can wash it wipe it clean and then if you're doing both of your sides for your purse at the same time you can uh, quickly just do both so I'll go ahead and finish doing this but you just want to make sure that it's getting all the little areas because that's going to be important for when we need to add our foil so so I'm just going to go in and make sure it has all the areas go into a quick time lapse and I'll be back Okay, so I'm about done here. I'm just going to do a little bit more. Now, you just want to make sure that it looks pretty even, like you in terms of the, you know, how the glue is on there, like so. And then mine's going to be a mess because it's been moving. <laughs> I did it the last time and it didn't move nearly as much, but maybe because I'm on camera and I'm rushing. So maybe that's why. But there we go. So, and again, you should clean this right away. I will be doing that shortly, but uh, let's put this down for a second. So, all right. And uh, as you can see, I mean, it's not perfect, but you know, you 
you know how it goes. And I used about half of this tube. It was already, it's about halfway now. It was already used a bit, but so maybe about a third or slightly more than a third in, in there. And then also you just want to make sure you go around and check to see if there's any glue that kind of went over the edges. And the great thing about this technique is that it's super, super duper duper easy to just, you know, to do this. So, and I do believe now I haven't, I was going to test it, but I can't find mine. I do believe if you have just the regular gilding paste, um, like the ones you use with the gold leaf, I believe that will work for this foil as well, but I need to test it. So if any of you have tested that, it's like the one it has, I had one that was like in a little black bottle and it had like a Mona Lisa on it. I can't remember the brand. I don't know if it's Da Vinci, but, um, but yeah, so I had one of those and I wanted to see if I could test that with the, the same foil we're going to be using today and see if that would work. So that would be another option instead of having to buy this specific material, because I don't know if you need to buy this one specifically. I think they're similar, but I will test that once I find my bottle in another video for you guys. But if you have already done it, um, let me know. Or if you know any other products other than this one that works with this foil for something like this, uh, let me know. All right, so now that we have this done, um, we're gonna let that dry. So that's gonna probably take about an hour or so, maybe a little bit longer, because it's not too, too thick on here. Um, and then we'll come back to put the foil. So, all right, we'll see you soon. Oh, before we go, um, I'm still waiting on that. You can see it, it's right over there. Um, I want to show you how to clean this. So, um, so what I do is I just put a paper towel down and obviously glue side up. And then we just take some water on a paper towel and it's literally just washing. And I mean, if you wanna go take it to your sink and wash it, you can do that too. I just find, you know, with all these details in the stencil, this kinda of works well too. So you wanna clean both sides because it's a little of the glue, a little bit of the residue of the glue will go on the opposite side as well. So you'll clean both sides like this. So just wash it and then just give it a little bit of a wipe on both sides and then you're good to go again. So it's great if you're uh, doing both sides of your purse at the same time. And this way you can just basically clean this off. Oops, try not to do that. Um, clean it off and then do the other side. So this way, I'm definitely clean between the sides. Um, like when you do the first side of the purse and the second side of the purse, definitely do clean the stencil in between because there will be, like I said, residue. Look at that, see? So I try to pick this up. It's kind of sticking because the other side has a bit of the glue on it as well. So. Anyway, just wanted to quickly show you that for anybody who wanted to know how to clean it. This is a, it's water soluble, the glue. So this way it's a quick way to kind of clean it up. All right, we'll be back. Okay, so we're back. Um, it's been about half an hour, not quite an hour, and it's already looking pretty good. You can see it looks pretty clear. Um, and clear usually means dry. Like once it's, once all the white paste has kind of cleared, then we are good to go. So now one thing I want to mention before we go ahead and put the foil is you can see the texture of the glue. Now that's important because we will see when we put the foil that uh, your texture uh, actually does transfer onto the foil. So, so it's going to make a really cool effect here. Now keep in mind that if you want to use a paintbrush or something when you are applying the, I mean, we got this stipple effect kind of like this, modeled effect um, because we were stippling the paper towel on it. If you want to use a paintbrush, I mean, I, you know, I don't think it's ideal for stencil work just because then you have a higher chance of it getting under the stencil. But if that's what you want to do, then um, you would give you kind of a line, you know, maybe even like a thread effect. So in any case, there's a couple options just so you know that how you apply the glue does impact the overall effect you will get with the foil. So let's go ahead and get the foil sorted here. So again, this is the deco foil from iCraft. And uh, I did show in my last video that um, the glue or the relief, this the uh, they call it mixtion, but the uh, relief comes in a set like this in a kit and this comes with its own foil. So there's like silver and gold, um, but they come in small sheets. You can get replacement sheets in the Pebeo line. I did see those on Amazon, but I find that I think this well, this brand gives you more color options as well as 
just, you know, it, it gives you more. And I think it gives you more in the package because you're getting like five longer sheets. So you get like five of these longer sheets in them. And like I said, there's lots of different color options. So the color options is really the big thing for me here. So anyway, so we're going to go ahead and use these. I'm just going to make sure I don't have one that's already been used and I don't. So, so in this case, what I want to do is I want to put it across the middle first and then I'll touch up the sides because it's not going to be quite big enough for that. So we'll just go ahead and do this. <clears throat> now we do want to apply some a, a decent amount of pressure because again, because of the way that we applied the glue, the foil will stick. You can kind of, I don't know if you can kind of see, but the foil is sticking. It's You can see that it's catching on the higher raised areas. So if you want it to also get kind of the lower glued areas, the ones that are kind of closer to the surface of the resin, then you have to press it a little bit. You don't maybe not want to press it too far down because you're going to flatten it out a lot more, but at least to get majority of the glue, we're going to try to press it as much as we can Just in the middle and again this is a really cool technique to kind of quickly get a design on a piece and actually I really like <laughs> how this turned out on the original the first one that I did so I might even use this kind of a technique on like a tray or coasters or something because I just think that it looked really neat and it's super quick in terms of design um, you know and like I said if you don't feel like you're overly artistic and you don't really know how to use the outliners or you don't feel that you're haven't you know maybe you're not you haven't practiced enough for the outliners or I know some people tell me their hands are a little bit too shaky for that this is a great alternative way to get some really nice designs on your pieces as well and get a really kind of luxurious kind of look on them. So, all right, let's see what we have. We can always come back and kind of touch it up, but let's see what we have here. So there we go. So you can see that the designs on here. And again, I can go back in and I'll show you, maybe I'll show you here. If I press it harder, you can see that more of the gold I wasn't pressing super hard just now so but let's go ahead and do the other parts let me go into a quick time lapse and get this kind of finished up and we'll come back but like I said you can press a little bit harder and get you can see there get a little bit more of that gold on there so I'll be back let's get into a time lapse Okay, so I think I'm just about done here. And as you can, I don't know if you can tell on camera, but we've kind of darkened up some of that gold areas, some of those gold areas, and we're looking pretty good. So, so there we go. And it just kind of, you know, this effect is so neat because it looks like you know, like fine silk embroidery, you know, like it has like that or really ornate look of like Asian or Indian influenced embroidery. I don't know if you guys can see, just look how cool. So I have that and you can see I have the other side. So there we go. So this one looks a little bit more gold. So I think what I'll do is uh, off camera, I'll probably just go back in one more time and see if I can add a bit more gold in here because this one does look a little bit more intense than this one so again you can you know decide how intense you want it to be if you want it to be you know more gold or more heavy you can keep going ahead and going back in with the foil and adding more um, if you want it to be lighter you can do less so you have that choice anyway so next steps from here are I want to do a flood coat or a top coat over the whole piece like the top the top and the sides so you can see here how cool that's going to look when I have those together. It looks pretty neat. So 
Um, so yes, yeah, so we're going to top coat them. So now I don't have, again, I don't have to worry too, too much about the drips on the bottom here, but I am going to put a little bit of liquid latex on this edge on the bottom so that when I go to pour over top that any little drips that I have will kind of get captured. I'll probably just end up having to cut most of it off anyway, but at least this will capture some of it. Um, now we, the one thing I want to make sure is when I'm doing my flood coat on these is that the sides, I do want to you know, seal them in with resin, but I don't want the resin to be thick on the sides because we still have to fit them inside um, the hardware here. And there is a little bit of room. Don't know if you guys can see. There's a little bit of room there to, maybe this side's easier. There's like a gap. I can fit my nail in there. There's like a bit of a gap. So I think if we add a little bit of a top coat of resin, we should be okay. Um, to still be able to fit inside the hardware, but we can, can't have it too thick. So I'm going to try to kind of just pour on top and then just wipe down, brush on the sides probably, and then just hope there isn't any thick areas. So we're going to try that and then um, we'll be back. So I'll go into a time lapse to uh, for the, the top coat like you, I usually do, and we'll be back afterwards to see how things are going. So we're back. It is the next day. So as you saw in the time lapse, I went ahead and did the t uh, just a single top coat. I didn't do a double top coat on this one, just a single one, because again, I want to make sure the sides stay thin. And you saw that I did put the liquid latex and then I just went around and removed it afterwards. And as you can see, it leaves the edge pretty clean. So, which is nice. I mean, as much as the edges are not going to show on this piece, it's still nice to know that the edges are nice and clean see on both of them looking good all right so the next step is assembling them now I'm not going to do an official assemble on these just because <laughs> I've never done it before and I'm kind of going to test out what I think is going to work so I'm just going to give it a nice little polish here and as you can see I really like the finish I mean just look at how nice that looks look at it Whoa. so and I think the stencil design actually complements the washi tape really nicely too even though they're not the same design they complement each other really well okay so for the inside like most purses um you know if we just went ahead and put you know on you know each side of this on like so so we have this side which looks amazing and we put this side equally amazing <laughs> equally amazing <laughs> um when we open it you see that you know unless it was just going to be used as a case with the top and bottom which you could definitely do um then that would be fine like that but if you want to use it as a purse you wouldn't be able to put very much stuff in here because there's you know a, a big gap opening like on this side and on this side so this way you wouldn't be able to hold very much and normally inside um purses there's like a fabric so we're gonna see what we can do about that and that's the part I haven't done before so I want to kind of play around with it so what I was thinking is I got a piece of fabric and this is just some silky fabric that I had it I cut it into a rectangular piece so you can kind of it's not even that <laughs> not even that well cut I just cut it really quick and then like I said I'm just temporarily doing this so I double-sided if you can see I use some double-sided tape just this one and I taped those two edges together so you just have like a straight seam down this edge here like so and the good side is on the inside so this is the rough side and this is the nice side because the inside of the purse you want it to have the nice piece so what I'm going to do is take and again uh you know, you if you're doing this permanently, you'll want to sew this properly. But again, I'm not working worrying about that right now. And then what we want to do is you would normally want to sew the bottom. So I would probably even say just do like a big gather 
like this or something and then sew it. In this case, I'm just gonna rubber band it because <laughs> again, I just wanna test it to see how it's gonna work. So I'm gonna rubber band the bottom. So hopefully nothing too bulky and I don't expect, you know, this is not a permanent solution at all. Um, if this works out, I'll just take it apart and actually um, do it properly. But so we'll just rubber band the bottom like that. So now we've made a little pouch like so, right? And I mean, normally you don't want this big bulky thing on the bottom, but, um, but we'll make a little pouch like so. And then I'm gonna take the edge where I joined it and what I want to do is I want to, not all the way up, because we want the purse wheel to open, about three quarters or two thirds of the way up, we're going to just kind of normally glue it. Like I would probably, if you, this is, it could technically kind of be a pocket, but we wouldn't likely have it as a pocket. So you would kind of Gorilla Glue or however you want to glue it here. And again, just going to use double sided tape because it's temporary. So I'm just going to put a piece here and we're just going to just kind of attach it there. And the same thing on this side, we're just going to put a piece here. Like so, so now we have, it's like I said, if when you secure it, you'll want to secure it uh, stronger there but now you have a little pouch. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. So once you have this done, uh, the next thing you'll do is you need to put the side of the purse on. So we're gonna just, and again, you'd be gluing it at this point, right? You'd glue it so this way it's all in like so. And then we would do the same thing, put the hoop around this one and I already have my tape here and we'll attach it to this side and close it up. So I'll be right back and I'll tape that. It's a little bit tricky just to kind of like angle everything to fit, but we're just gonna do that really quickly and I'll be right back. Okay, so I have my uh, fabric taped here. So we'll just slide that into the purse frame and then, oops, playing a little bit too hard there. So now, and again, this will be much more secure, but so just to kind of give you an idea, so that is what it would look like on the inside. So the sides look like so, and it looks like that. So anyway, so I think that's really cute. So like I said, I'm not going to glue it right now because I want to do it properly, but it just gives you an idea of how the purse looks. There we go. Now it does have the little chain uh, attachment here. So this is one and this is one. So if you have the chain, you would just uh, loop it in through here and it would be go around to here and then you would have your, um, yeah, like a shoulder bag. So you just tuck that in there and there. All right, there we go. So, <laughs> nobody wants to get in the way, but all right, so not bad for a first try, <laughs> I think. But um, yeah, like I said, I'm gonna, um, I'll go off camera and quickly kind of f uh, properly assemble this and I'll be back um, to kind of go over our final thoughts. Finally done, I found a chain. <laughs> uh, this is actually from my daughter, so I'm borrowing it uh, temporarily here. I will, I have, um, I have ones coming from Shop Resin Molds um, at some point. So once I get those, I'll swap them out. And so yeah, so you saw in the, at the end of the last time lapse there that I did end up Gorilla Gluing, this is the gel one, the uh, the sides to the frame or the hardware here. So, so now when you open it, I don't have to hold it. Ta da! <laughs> Look, mom, no hands. Um, so, <laughs> anyway, so yeah, so you can see that um, it looks really, really cool. So, this is the inside. So, yeah, I just glued those down, and then uh, now, like I said, we have the chains attached here and here. 
yeah so anyway so I think this is a really cool project I don't know how many I'll be making it's I mean it's really fun don't get me wrong and if you're really into accessories um, like purses and things I think there's endless possibilities in what you can do with this I mean obviously we can make the sides look really pretty we make the you know the front and the back look really nice um, there's so many different ways and this was a really to me I feel like this was kind of a, a more simple even though it looks super ornate, super fancy, really luxe. Um, but it was actually, the technique itself was actually pretty simple here. So that part I really think was cool was that, um, you know, we just use washi tape on the sides and then we use a stencil on the top. So I think this is definitely a project anybody at any skill level um, within resin could do. So beginners and more advanced people and arts, artists and non-artists, I think this is definitely something that all of us could do well and like I said I kind of did this for the first time here on camera <laughs> so it was a little tricky for me but uh, like I said it's not difficult I just you kind of have to just know where to put your hands and how to hold things and things like that but overall I think it's a really simple and fun and rewarding project because look at what you get at the end so anyways guys I hope you guys like this video and if you did uh, please let me know in the comments if you've tried this mold or if you want to try this mold or you know if you have ideas of what else would look really cool with something like this let me know in the comments anyways I'm gonna get going and I thank you guys for watching to the end and you know like I said um, you know, all your support really means a lot to me in terms of watching the videos all the way to the end, leaving comments, sharing, subscribing, all the things that you guys do, all of those who are sending coffees and super thanks and other things. I really appreciate all of you. Thank you guys so much. And uh, if you are looking, this one will not be for sale for anybody who can, um, who's wondering. I'm sure my daughter is going to steal it. But um, if you are looking for any items, if you want to do any shopping, uh, definitely check out my website. It's leadia.designs.com. And I do also have a mailing list for anybody who wants to shop um, maybe in the future and you want to possibly get discounts. I do have promotions and discounts. And also uh, this is a sign up list for like email notifications. And uh, yeah, and even if you just want to know when the latest items are being launched on my site, so this way maybe you can grab them before they get sold out, uh, check out the list. And uh, yeah. Anyways, so thank you guys again for watching and I will see you next time. Take care. Bye.